Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I'm going to talk to you about five things that my father taught me. Um, he recently has just passed away, so we thought it might be a cool thing and in memory of him to share with you some of the things that he instilled in me as a young carpenter that I still use in today's builds that we do. He used to live in Reno, Nevada. I worked for him for a couple of years when I was very young, about 18, 19 years old, and spent a couple of years learning some of the finer points of carpentry and craftsmanship. And a couple of things that he's taught me over the years, I have still applied to a lot of the projects I do today. And I'm gonna give you the first one is probably something I still use on every project. And that's finish nailing your joists to a ledger. So if we're hanging a joist to an installed ledger board on a house, we don't pre-install the joist hangers because around here in the Pacific Northwest, our joists vary in thickness from seven and an eighth to seven and three quarters thick. So with that much thickness, if we tried to put a joist hanger on the ledger before we put the joist in, it's gonna to be too high, too low. We have to notch it out, it's, it's a hassle. So what we do, we'll put the joist to the ledger and then we use a 15 gauge finish nail gun to temporarily nail the joist to the ledger. Now, a lot of people have asked me over the past, doctor, why don't you just use a framing gun to do that? And my answer is, well, framing guns crack wood. When you're trying to do a toenail, into a joist, into a ledger, and you use framing nails, they crack the end grains quite badly. Also, it's difficult to move that joist around, right or left, high or low, if you have framing nails stuck into the ledger. So what we do is we use finish nails. We use probably at least five or six per joist, and we can still bang it around with our hammers and make it the way we want it. If it has, to, if it's not quite on the line, we can knock it in line. Because when you're up here on a ladder with this against the house and you're trying to attach it, it can be a challenge. So what we do is we just use that finish gun and it's a great tip. I would say if you don't think it'd work for you, try it once just to see. You know, use the ample amount of nails. Now don't walk on that joist until you safely have your joist hanger installed. We never walk on temporarily suspended materials until we have the proper hardware. So there's your disclaimer right there. Another thing I learned from my dad was how to mix concrete. I was low man on the totem pole, so I gotta do a lot of the difficult jobs. I used to hand mix concrete and also use a cement mixer. So. Between doing those two over and over, I learned really well how to mix concrete. That's something that we still do today as well. So I learned from him how to mix it. Well, <laughs> okay, you throw a bag in there and then you put some more water in there and you throw another bag in there and then you let it mix up. Then you add another bag and then it gets a little crusty and then you just add enough water so that it starts to fold over on itself. You don't want it super soupy or loose or falling apart. You want it to kind of fold over itself while it's in the mixer. When you're mixing by hand, one thing he taught me was if you don't try to put all the water in the cement in the wheelbarrow all at once, it's better if you create a pocket in between the cement and pour the water in like a trough and only mix a quarter of the cement in the wheelbarrow or in your mixing apparatus. I use a wheelbarrow and, and a hose and a shovel. Only mixing a certain amount of the mix and get that mixed up really nice, and then bring some of the dry concrete into that already mixed area, and then add water as needed. Again, trying to keep it kind of folding over itself versus super wet and soupy, because it'll still set up, but you don't want to have it so wet that it's just like runny, because it takes longer for it to cure. So those are some things I learned about mixing concrete. Another thing I learned, I spent hours with my dad grading and selecting lumber. In Reno, where he lived, he was big on redwood. Redwood decks were the thing back in the 90s. We built a lot of redwood decks, late 80s, early 90s. He would buy units of material and sit on them because they were so well graded, super vertical grain. But we used to spend hours looking at boards, picking out color, choosing what board will look good to next to another board, making sure things weren't too bowed or cupped or maybe had too many defects in them. He was a big, clear redwood guy. I forget all the grades. There used to be like Con Common, which was junk, and then All Vertical Heart, which was amazing, uh, which meant that the tree rings 
were super tight in the middle of the of the tree and when they cut it they cut this clear vertical grain with super tight grains so the grains weren't loose they were like you know 16th apart or eighth apart uh none of this quarter inch grains that that twist and warp so much so they'd stay tighter longer straighter that kind of thing so learning how to grade lumber was definitely something i learned from my dad he also taught me something very important about lumber and that's protecting your investment if you make an investment to purchase over purchase product because either you got a deal on it or maybe it's an opportunity to get a certain length or a certain type of material you got to protect it you got to keep it covered and you got to make sure that when you're when you're moving it that you move it with care and not just throw it right and left throw it to the side or something like that keep it stacked keep it bundled keep it dry and keep it protected from the elements and it will look just as good when you decide to use it as it would when the day you bought it uh, i still do that a lot today with pvcs because if you get a bunch of rocks or dust and dirt in between the layers of pvc decking it's very expensive and you can ruin it by scratching it by getting sediment and, and just bad things in between the boards so I always try to protect my investment because if you ever do need to make a return, they're not going to take those boards back if they're defective. So something to definitely think about is protecting your investment. And one more thing my dad taught me that I still use occasionally, but not quite as much. He used to have us route, uh, put a radius edge detail on every single deck board before we would install it. So we'd spend hours creating these curved surface edges on the decking and it took multiple passes. You do a rough pass once to get it get knocked the edge off and then you'd go back and do a smooth pass and we would route everything. We'd route every cut, every post notch, everything was routed with a curved detail. I used to do a lot of that. I stopped doing the surface boards and just did the ends when I'd make an end cut on the on the edge of a deck and I'd put a nice bullnose radius to it. But nowadays with PVC, if you take too much material off, you're gonna have to paint it. So I just use a file now and do a nice rasped edge versus trying to use a router. I've used laminate trimmers with a very small radius bit and I've done that as well, but it still takes off enough to where you gotta paint the edges. So I just like to use a file or a rasp to knock it down so that when, if you're running a piece of fascia up against it or something like that, it still looks really nice. So that one's kind of adapted from what he used to do to something that I do now, but uh, still uh, kind of a cool effect. Routers and the right bit can really make a project over the top and give you that really nice look and make the client really happy because of the care and details that you took to invest into their project. All right, guys, there's five different things my father has taught me that I pretty much still use today. 30 years ago is when I learned them, and they still are in practice now. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. Don't forget to leave a comment below and like this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.